Hi, my name is Keith Cooper for North Light Images and in this video I'm looking specifically at making a long panoramic print on this, the Canon Pro 310. It's a pigment ink printer. In fact, it's very similar to printing the same sort of print on this, the Canon Pro 300. I'm going to print using the Canon Professional Print and Layout software because it's very easy for setup. And also from my point of view, it's easy because I'm using a Mac here and it's the same on a Mac and a PC. So there's no significant difference to it. Uh, the image here that I'm printing is one that I took in Wales um, a few months ago uh, when I was doing some teaching work and um, I went to do some, I, I do bespoke print teaching about how to use printers and things like this. And this just happened to be at a very nice location. And uh, I got up, had some breakfast, looked out the window and thought, what a nice view. Went out, took some photos. This is a panoramic made literally by just taking my camera, or it was GFX 100S, so you know, biggish camera, and just putting it this way, click, 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 a whole series of pictures. I stitched them together using Autopano Giga. In fact, I did them on this laptop. That is free software. I've covered it elsewhere. I use it for making panoramics. It's very easy to use and it's available for free. But anyway, that's the picture. In printing it on here, I'm going to use this paper here. And this is, um, 10 inch roll paper. Now I happen to have a roll of this so I use it for experimenting partly because I've got a roll of it. A 13 inch paper is quite tricky to find, uh, roll paper, and what I have got I don't really want to waste on just testing a print just to see whether it works. Um, I do use it occasionally but this is 10 inch, this is equivalent to the Epson Premium Luster which I produced a profile for for this so it works well on this but one difference between these two printers is that this one here has a new media type of photo media, there's art media as well, long form. So that is essentially a paper that's long. Now it mentions up to 1.8 meters on this. I'm not sure of the actual maximum length you can get. I'm not uh, inclined to test it because it will eat up ink cartridges and I've only got so many of them here for the testing. But this at 28 in on a 28 inch by 10 inch piece of paper is a pretty good indication of panoramics. I'm going to feed it through the top here. I'm going to load it in here. I'm going to set the paper. There is a new setting on this. There is a setting called any size. But you can put that in and then it's controllable by this. So I've edited this image in Photoshop. I've tweaked it a little bit, changed brightness, did, did a few all normal editing things. After stitching, I treat it as nothing more than just another image to print. There's nothing special about it. In terms of composition, I've made sure that the, uh, the trees are at either end of it, so they sort of box it in a bit. Uh, they encourage your view into the distant landscape. Um, I've added a little bit of sharpening, not much is needed um, because this has been much reduced from the original file size. The original file size here would print something that would fill this wall. I did say it was taken with a 100 megapixel camera camera and uh, 10, no, eight shots to make this one up. So let's say they're just you know, with a bit of overlap, then trimmed to a box. So thing with panoramics like this, I always overshoot and then crop to the composition I want because panoramic composition is quite tricky to get it. Uh, the, just that bit more than just a simple it's a big panoramic shot to it's a big panoramic shot where the composition just grabs you for a moment. Um, I did a video recently about making a panoramic black and white print here uh, that I've, I've got of the Royal Concert Hall in Nottingham. Now that's, I'll put a link to that as well. But if you're interested in the panoramic software, I've got much more covering that. And that software, the largest print I've made with that particular software was 47 feet long. So, yeah, it's good software and it's free. But anyway, here's the image opened up in professional print and layout. 
what I've done is I've set it uh, in terms of the print settings. Well, first of all, I said color, color management. I've set, I'm using a profile. As I said, it's very, this is very similar to Epson uh, Premium Luster. So I'm using that profile that I happen to made. The paper media type for this profile is Pro Luster. And this is one of those things where um, the information from Canon about this new media sort, photo paper long, doesn't really help you that much. Um, people are not going to make profiles for it. So I discovered this when I was testing the Pro 1100, which has a similar sort of thing. And I'm not entirely certain when you would need to use it and how you would profile for it. Uh, so yes, it's, it's there and useful, but it's a little bit short in actual information. We'll see how the print comes out. I think it's going to be okay. But anyway, I've set this using a profile. I, I've got the rendering intent set for relative colorimetric. Uh, perceptual is slightly different, but so I think I prefer the relative colorimetric in this instance. And of course, there is soft proofing tick box on this, so you can enable, disable soft proofing. Um, and although it's relative colorimetric and printing on a photo paper, it has defaulted to picking uh, using black point compensation. That shouldn't really be necessary, but this software seems to default to it and I've not found a problem through using it. But um, yeah, it's, I just make a note of it. So that's that. In terms of layout, um, I've set this uh, to center it. Um, when you're cutting paper like this, cut it a few inches longer because if you're going to get problems, they typically occur at the leading trailing edge of paper. Feed problems, head strikes, whatever. You're much more likely to get it that. And remember, if you cut the paper a few inches too long, you can always trim it to size. Whereas if you don't cut it big enough, you can't add paper. So it's you know, sort of obvious, just add a bit extra there. So this is probably about 28 and a half inches long. Doesn't really matter. I can trim it afterwards. But so I've set that, uh, set the alignment there. Uh, the next one is print settings, uh, say media type, photo paper, brackets, long form printing. And paper size is a custom paper size I've set. I've created a custom paper size at 10 inch by 28 inch. I'm not doing borderless on this. Uh, we're doing it by the top feed and standard quality is more than good enough for this. So that's everything set up for that. Now what I'm going to do is move, the, move this out the way and start the printing. Well, first up, I'm going to load some paper into this. Um, it's going to be a bit experiment. If you're doing stuff like this, make sure you've got enough space to do it. Let's put those out of the way. Let's take that. Let's drape that over the back there to start with. Let's lift that up. Now tell me how to set paper. I think I know that. Um, now we need to line the paper up. I want to cause it yeah, to get a good straight feed on this. So I'm moving this in here and put that down there. Let's pop that back. And it's come up with asking me what size paper, what type of paper. Now I'm just going to make sure this is all lined up properly. So it feeds straight. I'm going to set paper size to any size. And I'm going to set the paper type to Pro Luster. And we'll register that. So I've set the paper. I've got that. Um, I've no idea how well this is going to feed. So we'll do. It could well take a while from pressing, because it's quite a big image, from pressing print to anything happening even. Uh, press print. OK the settings. Let's set that. It says here. Any size luster. Processing. Please wait momentarily. No. We've got no error messages, which is always a good sign. Oh, slight intermission here now. I haven't used it for a couple of days, so it's agitating the ink. It'll just make noises for a bit, so we'll just let it do what it's doing. Suffice to say, I'll edit out most of this because really it always does it when you want to make a print in a hurry or something like this, or if you haven't used the printer. I mean, it's, yes, it's been a few days, but it's, it's doing something. Now, 
Now, I'm going to be careful about guiding this paper in. Oh no, it's going to do a few more noises. That's a C. And after all that, it loads it perfectly normally. I can hear a slight noise of the head touching the paper. As I said, that leading edge is where problems can occur. But here's the paper, it's going in, and hopefully the print is coming out. Well, here we go, here comes the print. It looks fine. Colours look pretty much like I was expecting. Paper's feeding through okay. There's no obvious skew. Looks like it's going to work. Which, if it couldn't do this, I mean, it's going to have problems. Right, so here's the print come out, and I caught it before it fell on the floor. The printer's making lots more whirring noises. Um, you'll see the longer margins at either end. Now, in looking at the leading edge of this, I can see just near the leading edge, one or two very faint marks. And they're undoubtedly that noise I heard just when the paper went through. Remember that roll paper like this has a strong curl, as you can see in trying to handle it. Uh, and the problem is with the strong curl like that, that lifts the paper just as the first edge goes through. Afterwards, it's got rollers to keep it straight, but the leading edge can just lift up a bit and just touch the print head. So I would suggest for this, uh, certainly if you've got paper like this with a stronger curl on it, leave perhaps when setting a custom size and cutting your paper, perhaps set a couple of inches, 50 millimeter margins, rather than just to be on the safe side, if it's a stiffish paper, and say this is 300 gram luster paper. So, um, you know, just a little bit more to be a bit more careful with it. Um, because I did wonder whether it would touch, and it did. But what about print quality? Well, yeah, it works, works great. Um, let me just lift this up to the camera and see without getting too much reflection on it. Hopefully that should, um, there we go, should give you a feel for the scene. Um, yeah, that pretty much captures one frosty morning in Wales. Um, it's a nice bit of frost on the ground and um, yeah. So if you've got somewhere like this and you want me to come and teach you how to use a printer, please do just let me know. I do bespoke print training uh, actually on site. I go out to people if you've got, uh, not usually for perhaps printers like this, but bigger printers and stuff. So yeah, that's a nice one. It works. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I will be getting uh, the review of this done in due course. Uh, as I've mentioned a few times before, we're in the process of moving house. We've now had a date for it. So uh, it does sort of alter things a bit. If you want to know about the panoramic software, check the notes for the video. And there's also a big black and white print that I did, big panoramic print. Although I did that on this, the P5000, since that's printed on 17 inch paper. Remember, this is just 13 inches. You could print this on wider paper. If you had a Pro 1100, for example, Pro, Pro 1000 prints just fine. But anyway, there you go. Panoramic printing on the 310. And panoramic printing works fine on this. I covered it a few years ago when I tested this as well. So thanks for watching. Bye.